It's great to have you with us here on WKYT. Through the 20th century, the Bingham family was one of the most powerful families in the American South, and certainly they helped shape Kentucky with its media empire based in Louisville. Educator, author, and historian Emily Bingham's quest to learn more about her great aunt has led to a fascinating book, Irrepressible, The Jazz Age Life of Henrietta Bingham. And we're happy to be joined by Emily Bingham today. Glad to have you in here. Thank you so much. We appreciate you coming. What led you to find Henrietta's forgotten trunks that were literally in the attic? Right. So Henrietta had a very small part in my family's story for me growing up. I mean, almost a non-existent part because she was so thrust to the side, to the margins. But I began to be interested in her. Uh, my grandmother told me some stories about how she spent time in London with these really fascinating artists and writers. And, and then we named our daughter after her in 1998. And so uh, people started coming to me with stories. My dad wasn't so happy about it, Barry. He, this was his aunt. And she was, she, he thought she was a little on the loony side. But uh, he did say, Emily, if you want to learn more about her, you might actually want to take a look at these trunk in the attic which you didn't know existed at the time. What did you find? I was a Snoopy kid, and I'd been in that attic a lot and found a lot of really cool things, but I think because of her being so forgotten, I must have overlooked it thinking it wasn't interesting when it was one of the most interesting things that could possibly be, including finding her own personal flask. And, and that is no small <laughs> flask, is it? That, is, that says a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That says a lot about so, her jazz age life. So you describe her as having had uh, quite an unconventional life. Right. right. So um, one of the le so two two uh, men she almost married in the 1920s at a time when her father was also trying to bring her into the family business and move back to Kentucky. These guys were her f lovers from London and New York City. But they uh, one of them wrote, "I can't tell you how much I miss you. It is so awful being here without you. I know. I just imagine you surrounded by adorers of every sex." And that was part of the issue with Henrietta. She was bisexual and had many female lovers and companions. And, and the men who loved her understood that. And, and she was always searching for happiness. She was. Um, she had a very difficult childhood, losing her mother before her eyes at the age of 12 in a car accident. And, and any person has a very difficult time recovering from that, but she carried that burden and some of the, the burdens that come with that about feeling responsible for her father. And that was very hard for her to find a real balance and happiness. And it was partly the culture too, was not totally accepting. Well, uh, certainly a book uh, full of eccentricities and, uh, and interesting. She was offered the, the helm of the Bingham Empire. That's right. right. That was the biggest surprise, that yeah. it might have been Henrietta and not my grandfather, Barry Sr., who might have taken over in the 1930s. And it was her choice not to, and you have to read the book to yep. figure out why. Well, it is a fascinating book. We appreciate you coming in. And Thank available any place. Absolutely. Your it. local stores and everywhere else. All right. All right. Good to see you. Pleasure talking with you. And we hope you'll stay with us now here on WKYT.